Good morning. It is an important day today. Why is it an important day? Because it's the last day of uni this year. And we are ending this last day of uni with an exam slash assessment slash performance type thing. I've had a shower, so that's why my hair looks a bit awful. And I have a cold, which is why my voice sounds a bit awful. Um, but nevertheless, the show must go on. So, uh, that it shall. Focus. Um, as uh, some kind of a side note, I guess. Um, if anyone else has, like, an old, uh, iPhone, um, <coughs> sorry, 3G, I think this is, um, has anyone else started having signal problems? We can't really see it, but it just says no service. Um, it says... It spends most of its uh, powered on time with no service. I just wanted to know whether that was a common problem or whether it's to do with the signal around here. My dad says it's to do with the signal, and I think it is, but uh, if anyone out there is having the same problem, uh, do let me know. Thank you. And yes, my background is of the day I met Corey Williams. Did you know that your earlobes line up with your nipples? So I was doing a lot of thinking on the train up here. Quite a lot of thinking just about things and I kind of found myself wondering what kind of slow day was it where they decided to find out whether your earlobes matched up with your nipples I can't imagine there was a lot of science going on that day for them to decide that that was what they wanted to look into now of all the things they could look into that's what they went for it kind of escapes me a bit. It's a similar kind of principle to um, like the guy who discovered milk. You know, like it would have been there one day, and like we can only wonder what his thought process was because like, it seems a bit odd. Like people go, people could say, "Oh, it's sort of revolutionary now because he came up with milk," but was it <laughs> like the? The way everyone looks at it is that he saw a cow in a field one day and he saw the others and went, you know what, I bet there's something really delicious in those. I'm gonna, gonna squeeze them and find out. I'm gonna drink whatever comes out. So he did, and that's how milk was made. But, <laughs> that's kind of like the best way to look at it. But I kind of like to look at it as he went, or like the, I like to think that the logical reason is that he went, hmm, my mum had something like those. And I remember eating them when I was younger and got milk, so maybe now I can have everlasting milk if I just try it on a cow instead. I think that's probably the logical explanation for it. But <laughs> also with bees as well. Like, again, there would have been a man or someone just there. And... You might have seen a little bee buzzing around all the flowers, or a beehive with all the bees there. You'd have seen it and you'd have gone, I bet they've got something really delicious in there. Something really tasty, something that could go well with things. So he stuck his hand in and pulled out a load of honey. What possessed him? Like, you know, we can look at it now and go, oh, well, you know, they've got honey. That was, was a good decision. But he didn't know it was going to pay off. He would have just gone and could have been stung to hell and would have gotten a bit of honey out of it. Uh, the weird things people do. It's, it's weird. Kind of ties on to what I want to say now as well. Like, also on the train, I started doing some people watching. Because I think people watching is quite an interesting thing. Like you just sort of sit there and look at people and pick up on little things that they do that they might not be aware of. Like one woman was reading the paper and also going... Like that. She wasn't eating. She wasn't eating anything. She was just moving her mouth. Like that. And there was another one who was sat on a train platform and every time she blinked she raised her eyebrows. And sometimes when she didn't blink she just raised them. Not in any kind of manner. She just kind of went... Like that. It was really bizarre trait to have, but I don't quite know how she would have come about to do that, just like, seems a bit odd. 
There was also someone else as well. It was only like a small thing. But we was, well, I was sat on the chair and she, I wasn't really paying attention, but I just kind of heard this kind of sneeze. But it wasn't any old sneeze. But I'm a big sneezer. I prefer to do my sneezes loud and proud because that's what sneezes were made for. You know, they feel great, so why waste them on a silly little thing? Right, but this woman had the perfect sneeze, like the stereotypical sneeze. She was just sat there, and then all of a sudden I heard a, a tew! And that was it. It sounded like a little mouse, but at the same time it was the perfect stereotypical sneeze that you would associate with, like cartoons and that, when they do a standard sneeze and it would be a tew! That's what it was, it was the best thing ever. I had to kind of like look away so she didn't think I was laughing at her. I think, people are amazing. Oh. 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 I may or may not have had too much to drink, but the point is He's making a vlog. that that is right, Jay. The point is No, he's making a vlog. The point is There's a car there, Nick. That's why I'm talking to you. Oh, pasty. Oh, I could do a pasty. Oh, pasty. No. I promised I would show you the aftermath of the performance. And the aftermath of the performance was that we was covered in paint. Because in our performance, we used a lot of paint. And we threw it everywhere. And I did ask my friend Simon to take some photos. But he wasn't able to because I stripped off too quickly and got rid of the suit that I was wearing, which was covered in paint. And so this is the kind of aftermath now and no doubt I'm going to watch this back and wonder what on earth I was doing in a similar thing sorry mum and dad this is the first that you have seen me drunk and that is exactly that so uh, we, we had loads of celebratory drinks to kind of end Hello. Hello. This is, this is Steph, by the way. Yeah, not with the. Sure she's now, uh, we had some celebratory drinks to kind of signify the end of uh, the second year of uni. And uh, now we are going to a club to kind of see in. Oh, fuck yeah. The end of the second year professionally, I suppose. Exactly. So, that is that. In a nutshell. And it is the morning after the night before. <sighs> yeah, I can't remember what I said last night. The only thing I am sure of is I won't be able to tell it to you now. The performance, I wish I could have shown you more of. Well, I could have shown you. Um, but we wasn't able to. So, sorry. We kind of started off the um, performance um, in these boiler suits. Like, just stark white. And then by the end of it, we was throwing paint everywhere and just generally, you know, doing all that. And it was very good. It was very good fun. And then everyone else who performed last night did really well as well. Then we all went out for drinks afterwards to celebrate. And some of us celebrated more than others. <laughs> let that be a lesson. So, yes. Let that be a lesson. Anyway. Apologies for the top listeners, by the way, but I am really hot at the moment. So I've just had to walk all the way up the hill with a big bag full of stuff. Um, anyway, yes. Um, see you in the next one. Don't know what it'll be or when it'll be, but... Mm, uh, just see you in the next one. Wow. Now I can't even turn you off.